Well, it's official, folks. The rate cutting cycle, rather, it, it really began today, right? This speech from Jerome Powell. In fact, I give him a 10 going along with this year's theme of the Olympics, but he has to stick the landing. Now, Powell stated that the time for has come for the policy adjustment that the timing of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolution, uh, the evolving outlook, and of course, the balance of risk. Powell confidently proclaimed though, that, quote, there's ample room to respond to any risk we may face. He also expressed that optimism about steering this economy back to 2% inflation while maintaining a strong labor market. Now, Powell didn't mention being gradual, which of course leaves the door open for the occasional 50 basis point cut. And the more of those we get, the sooner we'll get back to quantitative easing, more free money. The Fed put, folks, is back. By the way, the Fed put, that's defined, defined by CFA as uh, the belief held by market practitioners that the U.S. Federal Reserve will intervene with accommodative monetary policy to support the U.S. equity market in the event of a rapid decline in prices. The Fed, uh, of course, carefully navigating between a balance in, right, between normalization and deterioration because, listen, we all know the economy is slowing, but to what degree? Right. And, and I, I believe we're growing faster than a lot of folks do. Now, I'm not sure I'm not sh so sure why others aren't worried. I am with respect to Main Street. But I do say as an investor, I understand, hey, let the good times roll. With that, let's bring in Bianco president, uh, Bianco research president, Jim Bianco. All right, Jim, just your assessment of the speech itself. It was a confirmation that the Fed is going to pivot and start cutting in September. The market had been pricing that in now for several weeks. And you could see in the marketplace that there wasn't much movement on the probability of a September rate cut because it was already in. And if you look at the broader markets, stocks are up today, bonds are up today, almost exactly the same amount that they were down yesterday on a fear he was going to be hawkish. So we basically undid yesterday in terms of where the markets are moving. So he, you know, we were thinking he was going to pivot, and he basically said that that's exactly what they're going to do. Did it feel like a victory lap to you? He sort of felt like a victory lap, although he did acknowledge to some nervous laughter, you know, that the <laughs> transitory was right. wrong three years right. ago. And, you know, two years ago, they said that there would be pain, and there was really never any pain in order to get rid of the inflation number. But I think your comment made it the best, you know. Here I go on the dismount. Now, are you going to stick the landing? Are you going to be able to cut rates and not see my fear as a no lander, as somebody who thinks the economy is doing OK, is that if you're going to start cutting rates aggressively, are you going to stimulate it back into an inflation problem again? And are we going to be talking about inflation in 2025? Right. That's the sticking of the landing. And we'll have to see what happens going forward. You know, on that point, uh, Jim, back in April, 36% of global fund managers were in your camp, the, the no landing camp. They're down to 8%. Um, it's just, is everyone too comfortable with the notion that it's, uh, you know, that the mission accomplished? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you're right. They've all moved into this so-called soft landing camp, and I've always had a, a problem with the soft landing because it never really has a definition. I mean, President Biden keeps yelling that we're having a soft landing, and he thinks it means just falling inflation, and what Wall Street has a completely definition of right. it. And so, yeah, there is a big confidence that the economy is going to moderate, inflation is going to come down, the Fed could cut rates, nothing bad will happen from that. And that is a path that can happen, but I always get worried when everybody is in that path, because what that means is that's already in markets. That's what we have priced in. So if all that happens, they don't have to move because that's what we already expect. Jim, I want to ask you about the, the big news earlier in the week. Uh, you, you had some really intriguing comments about the, the job revision, that 818,000. Some say it was 915,000. You say, hey, the whole thing is misleading because it misses folks who are working off the books. With that in mind, how much harder, since the Fed is focused on the labor market, does it make their job? Oh, it makes it very hard. And that was one of the missing things from the speech. Jay Powell said that, you know, they're focused like a laser on the employment and the labor data, but he, he never addresses whether or not they have any problems or confidence in the labor data. In the last four years, depending on who you believe, 7 to 15 million people have entered the country, the population of Arizona. The labor data is surveys assuming that we have a stable population growth. Well, we don't anymore. We've had a surging population growth, and that's throwing off all the labor numbers. The revisions, we all say 818,000 more people are getting unemployment. So we immediately say that means that they're 
uh, we've eliminated 818,000 jobs. Not if they're actually being replaced by people off the books. Those jobs still exist. They're still making money. They're still spending money. That means the economy is stronger than the decline of 818,000. I'll be with Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs says it's closer to like 300,000 right. is what's been eliminated. And maybe 500,000 of those jobs have been replaced by off the books workers. Uh, so before I let you go, uh, we know there are going to be rate cuts. Uh, how many do you anticipate? And uh, and just how much how much is, is of today, like a couple of weeks ago, the BOJ changing your mind the next day after every, everything went crazy is a victory of the markets over the Fed? You know, I, I think it's kind of half and half with the Fed that they kind of heard the markets and they've also seen um, some weakening data without, you know, accepting whether or not it is because of population changes. I think they're going to cut rates in September. I think they'll probably cut rates in November. That's as far as I'm going to go. But I think what Paul told us today is that payroll report two, two weeks from today is as important as the CPI. It will determine whether or not we see 25 or 50 in September to get right. the ball rolling. If it's weak, we'll get 50. If it's not weak, we'll get 25. Sort of ironic, right? A payroll report that's obviously going to be revised a few times. <laughs> hey, Jim. Exactly. Have, have a great weekend, my friend. Always appreciate our conversations. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you, you too. And his name, uh, and his